Oh, and the draft fired. Oh, and we got a Myria Angel. Sick. Well, we got a bomb rare. Well, that's nice. I don't believe I opened any bomb rares um, in any of the drafts that I did before in Zendikar. Um, but yeah, I think, what was it? Uh, I think we had like two Alara trophies. Yeah. The one thing I don't like about this is I have to pass a Shepherd of the Lost, which is also a very good white card. Let's start by taking the Emiria Angel. Uh, I think four mana for four damage to a creature is still good in this format. Um, <laughs> it is really good, Wacky, but the funny thing is um, we did just pass uh, whatever the uh, uncommon angel is, um, some kind of shepherd, uh, four and a white for a three, three flying first strike vigilance, and that thing can actually pressure, yeah, yeah shepherd of the lost, Texas Knox knows, um, it can pressure the Emiria angel in a really problematic way. Um, so it's nice to pick up a removal spell that can deal with the, uh, the card we just passed. Um, okay. So, oh, wow. And of course, Sky Fisher, which I think is a very good card and we have a strong incentive to play white and it can help us hit land drops in the late game for a Myria Angel. So Predatory Urge, I think can be powerful. I'm a big fan of Into the Royal, but I am not a big fan of blue, which puts me in a weird spot. So then the question becomes, do I take like a medium green card like Timber Model Larva? Do I take a higher upside card like Predatory Urge? I think I'm gonna take Into the Royal. Um, I think Into the Royal is a good magic card and I'm fine taking it. I don't have to go into blue or whatever. Like if nothing else, this can always just be like a hate draft. Um, it's possible that I should just take like a medium green card, but if I have to play blue, then um, I'll be glad I have that into the royal, and if not, I'll be glad I took it away from my opponents. Um, interesting. Well, there's now a Bayloth Woodcrasher. Uh, there's also a Goblin Bushwhacker, which is fine. Um, but I do think I will take the Woodcrasher. Um, so I'm missing potentially a Predatory Urge, but I don't think that card's amazing. But, uh, let me reread it actually, because there's a good chance that I would actually want it. It's just, it starts like fighting stuff basically. So it's like a crazy late game card, but I don't know. Yeah, it does open you up for uh, to a two for one, but I don't know. I, I guess it's kind of like a win more card too, where you need, you basically need like um, something pretty big to actually make the thing work. Well, okay, now we're in a weird spot because there's Goblin Shortcutter, which is a totally reasonable two drop, but we also had Inferno Trap before um, and we didn't see any red cards since then. Um, and I think green is probably open based on this, so I think I should take the cage trap and probably try to play green, even though I don't love green. Um, like I would rather play the short cutter and play a deck in this format with cheaper spells, but I just don't think that the rest of the table is gonna let me do that, so I better do this instead, I think. Yeah, green does feel open. I still have yet to see anyone actually get the trap cost on the Bayloth cage trap, um, but I think if it happens, you probably just win the game. <laughs> One nice thing about Inferno Trap 2 is we could actually splash this guy. Um, like if we end up with one of the uncommon dual lands or if we end up with Harrow. Hmm, this pack is bad. I think we're gonna take McKindy Shieldmate. I know this is a card Cooper likes, um, but it's also just like a random creature that blocks. Like three mana, one, four blocker in this deck, I think is actually pretty good. We are. Uh, remember strongly incentivized to end up white. So I think we're fine to uh, force white to some extent here, but the rest of the pack is also just pretty bad, I think. Like this might just be the best card anyway. So, hmm, I think I should probably take, let's see. This is weird, because I don't think red has been super open. Um, and I do think Savage Silhouette is playable, and I actually had a deck with like three of them or whatever, which it felt like that was way too many, but 
Um, I think I still need to take Spire Barrage here. Um, one of the things about red not being particularly open this pack is that it could be more open in the next pack. Um, if nothing else, it's a good hate draft. We never need three Savage Silhouettes, I can say from experience. So um, I think it's fine to pass one here, for instance. Um, and then I could now take Expedition Map, which is a card I do like. And uh, if we end up like Selesnya splashing red for Inferno Trap, then Expedition Map helps. Otherwise, there's Zektar Shrine Expedition as just a card that's going to try to like burn the opponent for seven. Um, and I do think it's like playable. I also think the Forest Walk guy is playable, but I think the map is more important. I don't. I hate how it beeps at me like that. Oh, nice, and we get a Timber Maw Larva. Um, so this was, um, I think this was the Into the Royal pack, and yeah, I mean, sure, we didn't get the rare back, but now I do think we have a pretty, I'm not gonna say it's like a fantastic start or anything to green, white, splash red here, but um, like if we just ignore the Into the Royal and the Spire Barrage, I think our deck is actually pretty cohesive. And we're just gonna, at that point, be worried about, like, um, nice. And this time, well, do we want, yeah, I think we want the Savage Silhouette at this point. The Goblin War Paint is a nice aggressive card, can beat people down. Um, but, like, I do think Savage Silhouette is pretty strong. I don't even know if there are any removal spells. Um, okay, good to know about the first Into the Royal, thanks. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> it's kind of, it's always a relief to see that, um, I don't care if somebody gets a Teetering Peaks, that's fine. We'll take a marginally playable card that's also white for signaling purposes here in Narrow Escape. Uh, I totally lost my train of thought, though, when I said that. Um, I think there's a chance I would want a 1-5 lifelink, and I don't really think I would need the Fog. We'll take the Rare here for Rare purposes. <laughs> um, yeah, I hate that beep. Conqueror's Pledge, huh? Oh, another Core Skyfisher. Well, that seems really nice. Oh, but there's also a Harrow. I think I'm probably supposed to take a Skyfisher, but man, I really don't want to pass a Harrow. Um, the funny thing, in my opinion, about Harrow is um, it's kind of like Blinding Beam in Mirrodin. Uh, yeah, Conqueror's Pledge is like uh, five mana makes six one ones or whatever, right? Um, the, yeah, so it's kind of like Blinding Beam, where it's like, it's definitely a good, like, non-creature card, the hero is, right? But I think just like in Mirrodin, um, in Zendikar, it's like really important to pick up, like, the quality creatures, and Core Skyfisher very much is one of those. Uh, with the Expedition map, we can play the Skyfisher on turn two without, like, a real downside. Um, we already have a bit of fixing, there are other heroes we can pick up. Um, I do think the Pledge is on the slower side, and the Skyfisher is really good. Um, but I don't know. I, I think if I hadn't drafted this format, uh, recently or whatever, I could see myself either taking hero or the pledge here, but I think I just need to take the two drop, especially cause my deck doesn't really have any. Wow. Sphinx of drawer aisle. Yuck. Well, this is just an insane pack. Um, Sphinx of drawer aisle, incredibly powerful magic card. Uh, it is expensive, um, hideous end, powerful removal spell, play to Geopede, just the primo two drop for red. Uh, this is a really tough decision point because I don't know how the rest of the pack is going to fall. I don't think I'm allowed to take the Sphinx of Dwar Isle. I think it's actually Geopede versus Grazing Gladeheart here. And I think if, like, red shouldn't be open, right? Basically, like, the, the punish if I take the Glade Heart is, like, specifically seeing another Geopede, which I don't think is all that likely. I don't think I can swing blue, and I think, I don't know, I think I would prefer my chances as somebody trying to beat the, the blue deck that like is mostly gonna have to rely on the Sphinx. Like I just, I think if I had like 
more more of an indication that blue was open in pack one like if we wheeled the first into the royal for instance then i think i would be into the sphinx but i don't think i'm allowed to do that so for me it's really a question of whether i can take the geopede and expect red to be open i think the glade heart is really important though i think this card's really good um and we don't actually have any three drops yet other than the shield mate. Oh, it just auto picked it. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, well, the thing about Into the Royal J. John is that um, blue sucks. Well, not, I mean, it's not as straightforward as blue, it's just like Garbo or whatever, but um, blue really, it needs a lot of help. I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, I think Gladeheart is fine too. It's a, um, it's really nice to see a survivalist here. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's a geyser glider in the pack for the red player. Uh, I need to pay a little more attention to the timer. Uh, I'm glad I got the card I wanted from that one, though. Sky Ruin Drake is playable. There's another Spire Barrage, uh, but Survivalist is great. Uh, we have the Shield Mate as another ally. We can bounce the Shield Mate to re-trigger the Survivalist with the Sky Fishers. Um, I think we're, we're in the right deck for our seat. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, and another Grazing Glade Heart. I think that's probably what I'm supposed to take. There's still a Predatory Urge going around. Um, but I think I'm pretty happy with the Glade Heart. Um, uh, there's also another Sky Ruin Drake. Um, but at this point I think Harrow would be like very very strong because we not only have a double white card and uh, some double green cards and a red card on the splash but also a bunch of landfall cards uh, with the glade hearts I don't expect to wheel a harrow or anything but um, oh interesting now we have a frontier guide which it's not exactly a harrow but it does do kind of an impression of that Timbermaw Larva is good too, but I think I actually need to take this Frontier Guide. Um, it's a 2-drop, so I can play this on turn 2 and then play Skyfisher on turn 3 and bounce it. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I really don't love Harrow. Like, I already passed it, right? I, I took Skyfisher over it. I love cheap spells, uh, but the, the really nice thing about Harrow is it does solve a lot of problems. Uh, here we'll take the Frontier Guide over the Larva, basically. Interesting. Orin Reef now. <laughs> oh, and the nice thing about this is once I pick up the Orin Reef, the Expedition map uh, is more than just fixing for red if I end up splashing red, and I don't even necessarily need to end up splashing red. Um... So being able to Orin Reef, turn my Glade Hearts into 3-3s, three like that kind of thing, I think is like quite solid. Hope everybody is enjoying the stream today, by the way. Orin Reef is just... Oh, wow. Okay. Whew. Well, this pack is... I mean, painful for us, because... Well, I guess the Pledge is still clunky, and Harrow is just exactly what we want. If I think about, like, Seismic Shutter being in the same pack as Conqueror's Pledge, like, the Pledge feels quite a bit worse. This deck doesn't really have any way to leverage, like, kind of a go-wide strategy either. Um, I, I think I should just be happy about the Harrow, but it does feel weird to pass an on-color rare like this. I think I want... Do I want a Puma here? I could take an Ondu Cleric. Or I could just hate draft something. I don't think so, because I don't think I'm gaining a ton of life in this deck. And Puma can, like, attack and block more easily. It can also slot into somebody else's deck more easily. Um, I think the Ox is a totally playable card. This is a pretty late Spire Barrage, but... Um, The second O3. Um, I don't remember where that one was, but yeah, I think I think it's fine to take the ox here. Blue has definitely been open. 
Um, okay, Cobra Trap now. So this, I think this is a much more reasonable option than Conqueror's Pledge. I mean, once again, I don't think the trap cost is very likely to happen, but at least at instant speed, the 1-1s one um, can, you know, do a little bit more. And it's very possible that uh, two generic and triple white is just as uh, reasonable for us as this cost. Wow, and we get another Timber Maw Larva, which is quite good, I think. So what are we missing with this deck? Missing like some pump spells for sure. We'll take another Ox, though. At this point, we might not have to play either of them, which would be nice. Yeah, definitely missing some pump spells, so maybe like a Groundswell or something would be nice. Missing some removal, too, and white is not actually particularly open here, I think. So we'll see how pack 3 falls for us. Uh, but the good news is green, I think, is open. If we pick up, like, a random red removal or something, I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens here. Cunning Spark Mage. Is that worth splashing? I think it probably is. And we do have the fixing for red. I think there are a lot of guys that die to Cunning Spark Mage, and otherwise there's very little going on in this pack for us. Um, like, this pack is actually just horrible for us. Good black cards in the pack, though. Swarm is fine. Crawler, I think, is good. Nemesis Trap, I think, is pretty reasonable. So we'll take the Pinger. Yeah, Creeper is a 2-3 Vigilance. Ooh, interesting. So I think I'm probably supposed to take Fledgling Griffin hoping to wheel pretty much any of the green cards. Um, number of allies you control, so it turns a land, you know, at the base rate into a 1-1. One, one. I don't think we have enough allies to really expect to do anything crazy with the Animus, and I do think Fledgling Griffin is just a totally solid card in the format. The goal for me is that, like, we wheel, like, the Groundswell, from this pack, that would be something I'd be happy with. I'm not expecting to wheel like a light keeper of Emiria or whatever. Wow, okay. Well, we are getting rewarded for cutting white. I mean, five mana, three, four flyer is not amazing in this format, but um, it is a good card. There's a Lone Lion that could potentially wheel, though it's not super likely to. There's a Searing Blaze still in the pack, which is not great, but I think I just have to take this Archon. If the Lone Lion... Like, if we if we pick up a Lone Lion, then, you know, that's just amazing for us, but I think we have to take the rare. Um, again, Searing Blaze would be very, very good. Um, Kite Sail... Uh, I guess is getting worse by the minute for the stack as we pick up more flyers, but um, happy happy with the Archon if I can draft it here. There we go. Yeah, I would love a Lone Lion if possible, um, but um, I mean, if impossible, I would love it all the same. Not sure if anyone got that reference, but... <laughs> uh, okay. So, what do we want to take here? I don't think a card from this pack is ever going to make our deck. I mean, there's a Leatherback Bayloth, but the question is, how tough is it for us to put the Bayloth into play? And it seems like it's quite difficult, short of having like a Harrow or something. Um, we don't really have any other mana fixing or anything other than the map. Would I ever just take the Bayloth? I, I guess I could. Um depending on, like, what happens in deck building or whatever, like, if I'm casting this guy, even for, like, five mana, it's probably still good. Obviously, it's way better. Yeah, I, I don't know. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Explore. I kind of just don't think it does anything, but I'm sure that's heresy or something. We'll take the LBB. Um... But I think uh, part of me wants to, like, hate draft, like, a Claws of Valakut, because I could see myself losing to the Aura Cheese. Okay, and there's the Groundswell that we were hoping for. 
There's also a slingbow trap. Uh, would I rather have a ground swell or a slingbow trap now? Destroy target attacking creature with flying. So it never kills the terrifying sphinx, but you know what can kill the sphinx? Plus four, plus four, or even plus two, plus two. Um, kite sail, again, I think would be good. Probably wouldn't be great. Rest for the weary is actually a lot of life for two mana. Um, and ground swells a lot of damage for one mana. So I'll take the ground swell. Hmm, tough one here. I can take a quick sand, a marsh threader, or another ground swell. Yeah, I think ground swell is really good. Um, so quicksand is a nice interactive card, but if I'm trying to play a triple green card, I might not be able to swing it. Um, I kind of think I want the Marsh Threader, though. Like, I'm not even positive I want to main deck this card, but in general, I, I do think it's just good to have a bunch of cheap cards in your deck. But the other thing is, like, post-board, I think this card is very good. Um, and we haven't seen any of them. We have a chance to wheel the other ground swell still. Um, and while that's also true of Quicksand in terms of not seeing other versions of it, like, Quicksand when we're trying to splash red might just not be reasonable. So I can take the Sejiri step here. I can take Snapping Creeper as just like a totally medium card, but I don't think I need to put something that medium into my deck. I could hate draft a Jagwasp Swarm, or I could take Rest for the Weary as like a gain eight life. Um, I think there are potentially times where I'm going to want the Sejiri step, and I do have the Expedition map in my deck. Um, this would be worse if it were a green source, actually, because, um, note that with the two, uh, four mana two twos that get pumped for the forests when I attack, like, playing green sources that aren't forests, like, does have a real cost. Um, I think it's okay to do this. Not super high confidence. It might actually just be best to hate draft the swarm. Okay, and we do wheel the other ground swell. Um, as I hoped that we would, and I don't think we need the Grappler Spider, and we just talked about kind of why Colony Garden is more awkward than you might think it is. Um, and I think we would play a second Groundswell on this deck, so I think I'm happy about this pickup. I think my deck is, like, pretty good, though. I don't think it's necessarily like a- oh, wow, we got the Lone Lion. Yes, let's go! Okay. Good to know. Thank you, Hexus Nox. I appreciate that. I love, love, love a lone lion for us here. It's so sick. Boom. So Battle Herda is like not a super unreasonable card, but I can absolutely die to Claws of Valakut. I think the auras in this format have a much easier time cheesing people out than you would expect. Um, and for that reason, I'm even considering running my um, uh, aura that I picked up in pack one. Do I want Slingbow Trap or do I want Rest for the Weary? I think the random sideboard card is more important than the life gain card, even though it is narrower. This could be a mistake. Oh, but it does say a black creature. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change my mind here and take the Rest for the Weary. I think Slingbow Trap is very clunky. Very late Lava Claw reaches. Yeah. I, if it said blue instead of black, I would have taken it, because there are a bunch of blue creatures with flying in this format, but I don't know, I just... Four mana to destroy an attacking creature with flying, like, it's just so specific. But we do get punished here as we get another rest for the weary anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Bull Rush. Um... Cooper made a joke about that card being playable if you have enough Geopedes or whatever in your deck, because then it's plus two, plus zero first strike, sort of, for one mana. All right. So I think my deck is good, not great. Um, maybe maybe good doesn't do it justice, but uh, let's cut all this stuff. Sort by color. Definitely going to want 
loam lions, and sky fishers. Gonna want glade hearts. Gonna want Emiria Angel, Fledgling Griffin, Archon of Redemption, Survivalist. Do we want? Yeah, I mean, Survivalist is still good, if, even if it's not great. I think this deck probably wants just Timber Maw Larva instead of the Leatherback Bayloth. I think it seems much more castable that way. And then this can be the top of our curve, so we certainly have some expensive cards in the deck. Um, I think back toward the bottom end, I mean, let's get the Spark Mage in there, get the Inferno Trap in there. I think double Groundswell will be good. I assume we're going to want the Frontier Guide, but I'm, whoops, I'm not 100%. Oh, wait. There weren't sliders like this the whole time, though, were there? <laughs> uh, maybe there were just sliders like that the whole time. <laughs> oh well, whatever. Um, that's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... What are we looking at for the last cards for the deck? Um, I don't think the Puma is really doing anything special for me. I think Marsh Threader, Frontier Guide, Ground Swell, Savage Silhouette are the main cards I'm interested in, with Shield Mate, the First Ox, Puma all being behind. So let's put let's put another ground swell in. I think we do want these two drops. I think the ground swells are really important. And how do I want to do this? I could just play like a shield mate. Yeah. Narrow escape is aptly named, it is certainly narrow. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether I want to count map as a land. Um, I mean, Stonework Puma is basically a 2-2 vanilla, with the exception of the survivalist. Does that mean that I want to play the shield mate so the survivalist does a little more? I assume I have no allies in here, right? I don't see any allies. Um, I guess it's like Silhouette versus Shield Mate. I think in a deck like this, Silhouette is better. Yeah, Orin Reef is, yeah, it's the reason I'm talking about allies, because I'm just trying to figure out, um, like, if I want to try to leverage that ability anymore. Um, I could just play both of these. It, it's probably fine to play both of these, and then just play map plus 17 lands plus Harrow plus the Frontier Guide. That should be enough mana sources anyway. Oh, I only have five and a half minutes for deck building. I better hurry up. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. I don't think I want to play Sajiri Step or whatever in my um, in my main deck here. I think I would want to see a reason to be playing it. Okay, so now let's sort by color. Yeah, the, the one thing, the only thing I'm not sure about here is um, I might want one more land, if anything, which is a very common theme in, um, in Zendikar. But, um, and then how many mountains do I want in this deck? I can probably just get away with one, because I have Expedition Map and Harrow. 
and only two red cards. Let's see what the lands thing suggests. Nine, six, one. I don't think six planes is ever reasonable here. I think we have to go minimum seven. And then this brings me down to nine green sources with the Orin Reef. Um, I think I think the green land is still good. Yeah, I think basically I think playing Glade Hearts um, as three threes um, is like a pretty big deal. Uh, playing the Orin Reef as a three three as well. Um, but it's definitely a good question. It's a good thing to think about. Even the Frontier Guide becomes like a more relevant creature. Um, okay, so eight seven one. Does that make sense? Oh, I guess I have Frontier Guide as red fixing too. I think I'm in for 871. Not counting the Orin Reef and the Expedition map. Glad I didn't take that triple white card. That would have been bad. <laughs> I think there are a lot of X ones in the format and like blowing up the opponents like play to Geopede or whatever with your spark mage is like really sick, but I don't know. I mean, it's all, we'll just see how it goes. <sighs> okay. This is a good hand, not a great hand. But yeah, some super, super close and interesting decisions in deck building. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not high confidence about almost any of that stuff. Okay, so my turn. Crack and Hatchling, okay, two main step. Well, we will play the one that can gain flying. I think the deck is good too, but you know, that doesn't mean I built it optimally or anything. Okay, land would be sick. Not land is not sick. Um, I'm just gonna attack if they, you know, block and whatever. If they understand that they have to block with the 0 4 when I attack with my 2 2, then that's totally fine. Yeah. This is absolutely a free attack. Okay, still not doing anything. Land? There we go. Ding ding. So I think this time I'm just gonna attack with the one that has flying. Feels good to be in such um an assertive spot here, like the opponent only has one land in play, core cartographer, that's whatever. And I'm fine trading any of my guys for that. The one thing I want to make sure here is that um like I don't use my ground swell when it might be my trump card to deal with a Sphinx later. Frontier guide, okay. Yeah, so I think I just go for the alpha. They're gonna trade their guy for the glade heart probably. I mean any of the trades are good for them and bad for me, but um, let's just do this. They're gonna, yeah. If they trade for the Orin Reef, yeah, I mean, them, them trading for either of these I think is good for me. The one I don't want them to trade for is the one that they didn't block, the Flyer. Then we'll play another Glade Heart. And pass. Let's see if they have the Sphinx. Wait, they're just passing? I thought for sure they would have the Sphinx here. Well, that makes life a little easier for me. I don't really know what the flash cards are. I know we have one of the scariest flash cards here, but I think we just get to make this attack, not be too worried about what's going on here. 
into the royal. Yeah, I really don't mind that, I think. So they're just going to take two damage. And then we should be in great shape if we ever find land. We can always just get the frontier guide online later. Core duelist, I really don't care about that guy. Well, another ground swell is good and bad. <laughs> we'll do this. Some really repetitive turns here at the start. And let's not cast our ground swell for no reason. We'll now get the frontier guide online and then um, hopefully that'll be good for us eventually. We are in an awkward spot here, just based on only having three lands. Okay, this is interesting. They still have some mana up. Uh, let's see what our draw is. Okay, we do draw land this time. Um, I think I just want to play a Myria Angel. And then next turn I can just activate Frontier Guide, get my mountain. If they have a counter spell or whatever for this, then that's fine. I've gained my life, thank you very much. Uh, and then let's just pass, I think. Yeah, and sure enough, they do have the Sphinx, but fortunately, we planned for this exact situation. We've got our ground swells at the ready. If we draw a land, then we're in fantastic shape. Did not draw a land, but we also didn't need to, because now we can go Savage Silhouette here. And the opponent likely is going to feel like they have to block. And if they do go for the single block, then we have the ground swell. All right, and the opponent says GG. And so it turns out all you need to beat the Sphinx is just some pump spells and auras. Um, still a very awkward draw. <laughs> yeah, those those would have been disastrous for me for sure. But um, I don't know. I think at that point, it, like even though they would be bad, like I still have the other into the royal. I still have a formidable board state. The opponent's on the back foot. Like. Um, Ground Swell is plus four, plus four is still a big problem for them. Um, anything I want to change here after sideboard? I don't think so. The only thing I can think of would be playing another land. But it's not like we drew the shield mate and really wished it was a land in that game or whatever. We also only have like one data point in that regard. I don't know. I think it's okay to run it back. This hand is quite a bit worse than the previous one, but I'm still gonna keep it. Hmm. This Zendikon is a problem for me, I think. Okay, let's play Orin Reef and let's pass. Oh wow, they're just gonna kill me with wind Zendikons. I guess I have Gladeheart to gain life. But let's go to main step. Um, is there a reason to play planes here? I don't think so. Let's just play a forest and then pass to their turn and then maybe they play an artifact somehow. <laughs> Please. Uh, they're just going to beat me down. Okay. Oh my god, they did play an artifact. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
us. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, by the way, Hexus Knox, about the planes this turn. Uh, sad thing about playing a Glade Heart here is they should kill it, but that's probably okay for us in the scheme of things. We have to play on curve, we don't have another choice. And if they tap this and shoot the Glade Heart, they do miss some damage as a result. We really, really needed that um that beast token. Okay. This is annoying. Let's see if they go for the Blazing Torch. Oh, it looks like they're not going to. Well, that's really good for me. Can't block. I don't know why it's telling me that I could. They should now equip the Hatchling. And I think the funny thing here, I think we actually have to use the ground swell to kill the hatchling. Well, maybe that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's go to main step. And then, okay, let's start by playing forest. We definitely want forest in play, done. Yes, and then let's think about let's think about this turn because this turn's a little more interesting than probably the rest of the match. So we can, I guess, I don't really care if the Kraken Hatchling dies. Um. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I don't think there can't be a world where it's correct to go for the ground swell. I think I just have to attack. And then the best case scenario thing is that the opponent goes for the blazing torch on my turn, but they shouldn't do that. But I don't know. I mean, I still I don't think I'm ever supposed to kill the hatchling. I think I'm either supposed to plan on saving my Glade Heart or. But the Glade Heart doesn't actually outrace the Flyers. So I think if they kill the Glade Heart, that's okay. I think it's probably okay regardless. I think I just need to cast my spells. Yeah, I mean, if they kill the Timber Maw, though, I, I think I'm okay with that. The thing that I'm not okay with is only spending one mana this turn cycle, or potentially even zero, and then drawing a spell that uses a bunch of my mana. That, I think, is a play that would lose me the game. Okay, opponent's going to continue attacking. Welkin turn. Okay, so I have to kill them in two turns, basically. Two Welkin turns, if you will. Okay, the fact that they're passing here is great for me. Yeah, this should be pretty painful for them. We're not going to have lethal here, but two, four, six. Yeah, okay. The opponent can't kill me either. Yeah. Well, that's not going to work. That's actually lethal. All right, whew, choose myself to play first, get rid of this. Uh, this hand is not amazing, but I do think it's a keep. And we'll go to main step. And with this deck, 
I think we just want to play forests. This is a hand where I'm very happy that I have a McKinney shield mate instead of another land. I think with um, another land, I would have to ship this. <laughs> Teetering Peaks, okay. It's a Groundswell shirt. And a Scrabbler. It's not going to attack super well, hopefully, into the um, Shield Mate. There's an Orin Reef, a little late to the party, but not the worst. Getting much faster with this client, which is nice. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, well, if they have a land here, that becomes what? Like a 4-4 or something? So we have to take it. But I think that's okay overall. It's another good matchup for the uh, trap, by the way. Multiple cheap artifacts and stuff. Okay, Orin Reef. Yeah, we might be in trouble here. Like, we can't block the 4-4 profitably still with the ground swell. Like, w basically we're in bad shape now, I think. And it's possible that I could even get punished for the way I sequenced my lands if I draw a Myria Angel here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, currently we are losing. Taking 8 damage, can't do anything about it. I could play Groundswell as a gain 4 life, but I don't think that's really worth it. Weirdly, the opponent just has nothing. I mean, I've weirdly had nothing as well, so <laughs> maybe it's not actually that weird. Um, I think I now have to bounce my shield mate, which is very awkward, but I don't think I can afford to go back on land drops here. The real rough part of this is um, basically tapping out of the ground swell, but the opponent has a bunch of mana up and the Skyfisher might just die. I think it's okay to tell them that I have something here. Like, obviously, I, I am telegraphing something by making this play, but whatever. They didn't cast anything. I need to be able to block if they attack. This play, even if this play gets me two for one, it does let me block. They might just have, like, a journey to nowhere here. They have a Searing Blaze instead. So this is kind of what I was hoping for. So now they don't have an attack. Still take three damage though. Let's see what their play is now. Oh wow, they offer me this trade? Snap off that trade. Look at my life total. Okay, they have a bold defense. That's, I mean, it's not good for me, but it's life. Okay, to my turn. Main step. Mountain. Not a mountain. Um, well, this is still good for me. I now have the option to... I can make a 4-4 four, four shield, or uh, whatever it is. Basically, I, I have some real ally synergies now. Um, I think I would rather make a 3-3 three, three, and a 2-5. So let's lead on, you just play land.
Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Crackshot. Good to see you, by the way. They have a Bushwhacker. That is annoying, for sure. And they have a Windborn Charge, so I'm actually just dead, I think, now. I'm just gonna say GG. I assume that kills me. Yeah, okay. That was a lot of damage. Okay, well, don't want to die to this opponent. I would rather survive, if that's an option. I don't think this is like a terrible matchup or anything. Um, I'm a little bit interested in like a narrow escape. Um, Cause like narrow escape, save my thing from the searing blaze, gain four life is kind of nice. But I don't actually think that I should change anything. I think we just need a bit of a better draw than that. And the Cunning Spark Mage should be very good against them. Yeah, I mean, we might just die here. It's definitely a possibility. It's hard to beat a Boro stack. So options are like Rest for the Wearies and Narrow Escape, maybe a Pillar Field Ox. I'm just going to try it again. Sand is not amazing, but I do think it's good enough. Well, trying land does not improve anything for us, sadly. Probably didn't need to telegraph that I have no pump spell by auto-passing there, but I don't know, they only had one white mana, so they weren't doing anything anyway. Do I have to keep drawing lands every turn? <laughs> um... Well, I guess I am glad that I kept my land count the same. More land, more life. I don't think so, sadly. I think they're just going to have, like... Well, at least they didn't have Mountain, Searing Blaze, whatever. Or, I mean, they could have had the equipment again, which would just be busted. Adventuring gear. And they have the journey, though. That's pretty brutal. Am I now supposed to try to block with the Lone Lion? Shield me. No, I can use this guy to block instead. This is going to be... I can just already tell this is going to be frustrating. Like, we've already just drawn so many lands, and... I don't know, like, we're just going to die. <laughs> At least give me a death with some agency. We now have to root for Cooper to get paired against this player and to defeat them. So we get hit for three now. And that guy, which doesn't matter. <sighs> like, why can't I just draw something that matters? <laughs> This is kind of absurdly few spells. I mean, I guess I kept a five lander, but I've drawn three lands in one spell, which is not great. Yeah. And a hook master on the shield mate hit me for five. Yeah, I mean, this is just over, right? Now I have to leave the lone line back and they're gonna have more spells and I'm gonna die. Uh, okay. Come on. Uh, well, 
I could tell this was going to be frustrating, but I didn't really understand what I was looking at here. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, that's just magic, right? Like, that's just the game. And then I just have to hope I don't get paired against Cooper for round three, basically. And I even think I'm in worse shape if they chump attack here, so I don't hate this. Let's find Emiria Angel. Step links, okay. Or the Archon. We have two really good flying white rares to find. And instead we find land. Okay. We're just never gonna draw another spell. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. <laughs> and they have the Searing Blaze. So I kept a 5 lander in a deck with like 19-ish mana sources. So maybe that's just already asking for trouble, but like, I don't know. Even like Harrow is nicer. Expedition map, like both of those cards at least thin the deck, get more relevant lands into play, or at least they can. And we're paired against Cooper. Oh, whatever. All right. Well, this hand's good. So that means Susu is 2-0. Um, it's a main step. Oh, whoops. For a second, I thought I messed up there. Um, uh, good thing I didn't. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this should be good for us. Let's see what Cooper's doing here. Green, red. All right. Main step. Spark mage that we can't play. Attack. We have a 2-2 two -two flyer sort of in a 3-3 three -three versus Cooper's empty board, so hopefully we're in good shape. We might see a survivalist from him too. Okay, just plays a 1-1. One -one. I think I'm happy about that. Main step. Yeah, I think this turn we have to play the, uh, whatever you call it, the larva. Okay, so there's a hill giant, and we can make a land into a 2-2, two -two, but it doesn't untap the land or anything. Main step. Okay. This should basically win the game, because now I get to... What's my play here? 
I think I'm supposed to put the Savage Silhouette on the 3-3. Three, three. Um, and then I'm attacking with a 4-4, four, four, a 5-5, five, five, and it, like this should just be game over, right? Okay, are we chumping the 5-5? Five five? I guess that makes sense. So we still take 6. Sure. There's not really a card that gets Cooper out of this, though. Survivalist is good. You have now a 4-4 four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. Because of the Orin Reef. Okay, so I think because Cooper didn't use the Orin Reef, basically there's a, um, a plus two plus two here or whatever. So we're just gonna attack with the Griffin, uh, which has flying and the Orin Reef. Um, but wait, then why did he, wait, what can he actually have here? Hold on a second. Punishing fire? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right, Crackshot. Yeah, that's kind of what it has to be, right? Nothing else really makes sense. Yeah, all right, whatever. Let's just send him. Yeah. Because if he just had a ground swell, he would just have another forest untapped here, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Crackshot. I think that was a I think that was a punishing fire. <laughs> Cause it like it has to be it had to be an instant for one in a red, basically, right? Or an instant for uh for two green. Um, so, wait, but, you know, no, it, it couldn't have been Vines of Vastwood, and, yeah, I mean, technically it could have been Seismic Shutter, but, like, that doesn't actually do anything there. Um, okay, do I want to change anything against Cooper? He's playing Allies does like his allies. Uh, I don't hate Leatherback Bayloth in this matchup. Um, um, <laughs> I 
Do I want Leatherback Bayloth, though? I think it's probably fine to play it. I don't want to change the mana base or whatever, but... Like, if I think about how the shield mate is probably not super relevant... Do I need to change the mana base? I mean, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 green sources, not counting map and harrow and frontier guide. I think this makes sense. Whatever, let's just submit. Uh, this hand is an ugly one. I don't think I'm allowed to keep this hand. This hand is quite a bit better. Do I get rid of Harrow here? Yeah. I think Harrow goes... Just need to find third land anyway, so whatever. There's Orin Reef. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to your turn. And then I might not even be able to play Skyfisher here. Red, red. Kite sail. Okay, well, it's good for my trap, I guess. Main step. <laughs> Another Skyfisher. Do I just set myself back to Oblivion on land drops? I think I'm probably supposed to. I think it's fine. Maybe this is bad. Stonework Puma, okay. Well, not drawing lands makes me feel like I could have gotten more punished than I did. Kind of a weird draw from Cooper here. Timbermaw is looking very bad, by the way. Like, not only is it 4-drop, but, I mean, I only have one forest with this hand, so... Okay, the Battle Singer, sure. Um, so you have to fly the Battle Singer. Okay, let's think about what's happening here. This is a 3-1, this is a 3-2. I think I take the damage and just try to use the Groundswell to trade. Or I can just trade with the 2-2 two -two flyer that I just drew, or the 2-2 two -two guy, whatever. Um, <coughs> yeah, I don't really see why not. Don't think I'm supposed to be blocking, so... Another ally here could potentially be a problem but we have one ground blocker regardless. Tuk Tuk Scrapper, okay. This is a May. So we can just block that guy. I have to take five damage here still. Oh, the scrapper doesn't have haste, never mind. So we only take a couple damage. It's not too bad. Okay, and we've gotten rewarded for our play because we've drawn zero lands here. Um so do I now want to leave back a skyfisher? I think I just want to try to trade the glade heart. Like it's not really doing much for me here. And just hope I draw a land eventually. I think it's just fine to keep, keep the pressure on. I can obviously lose to um, 
Searing Blaze or whatever, but actually, I don't know. I don't love my own play here. I don't, I think it could have been very reasonable to keep a blocker back. But what is this draw from Cooper? Did he board into mono red? Or does he just have like all green cards in hand? Okay, he goes for this. I mean, we just snap off any block we get the chance to make. Trading two damage for four here at the moment, which is feeling nice and safe. And there's the forest, okay, and the snapping creeper, which I don't really care about. And the kite sail is gonna move there, sure. Yeah, I think I just attack with both. No blocks. Okay. Well, that was a good read from him. I mean, my play doesn't really make sense otherwise, but now he does die to a land unless he leaves a blocker back. But I guess I can maybe die to some stuff here too. And this can gain vigilance. Uh, Oren Reef, yeah, we might be in trouble. I wanna, well, I need to find land. If I find land and there's no interactive card, it's the last one in hand, and I don't think we have a reason to suspect land exactly, like... Well, wait. But you would play land here, right, to have Vigilance? So what is the last card? Is it the Punishing Fire again? I need to draw land. Please, can I draw land? Please? land? I mean, that is a land. That should be game. Well, we did get there with the two and one. Susu, the person who was considering dropping, ended up with the trophy. Once again, strong finish with a player with a black heavy deck. Not too unusual, but we are still in the first place spot, which I am happy about. 